it helps to break the card of the fire like what we've seen here. Okay. We go down. So we can come in here. <coughs> have a skirt edge. There we go. You can see here how the cartilage is bowed. So I'll find this up here. A very good injection, so good hemostasis. I'm going to come in here towards the inferior. Release these decusating fibers. And then as I do that, I'm going to come over to a caudal approach. And release these decusin fibers through a caudal approach. This is an avascular dissection, as you can see here. There we go, that's our release. And now I can elevate the opposite side. So now I'm released on both sides of the septum there. And you can see here we've got an, a bow here along the anterior septal angle. And we can release that too. I could even approach the nose caudally here. And anteriorly, and there's the anterior septal angle that's released. On the septum. So we release the entire septum so we can reposition it. And when we look down at the maxillary crest, Q2, we can also swing the maxillary crest position over, but you can see here that actually the septum sits on this maxillary crest, crest so we don't, don't have to do a swing and door procedure because she's already sitting on the maxillary crest. I'll release all the way to the anterior septal angle. At so this point, I'm going to harvest some cartilage. Two millimeter acetone. I'll leave a nice conservative one centimeter caudal strut and dorsal strut, just harvest enough for a septal extension grant. Elevator. Let me see the, uh, the elevator first. Next, I'll take a 2 millimeter acetone. 2 millimeter acetone. Okay. I'm going to release along the quadrangular cartilage. Tap tap. And the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid. Tap tap. Tap tap. Tap tap. Tap And then along the maxillary cross. Tap tap. Take the bottle and some browns, please. I need to harvest our specimen. Just here, we're going to make a septic extension for our last specimen. So, we harvested uh, our quadrangular cartilage, preserving one centimeter dorsal. Uh, one half centimeter dorsal, one centimeter caudal strut, and now we have a 25 millimeter, almost 27 millimeter by 22 millimeter portion of cartilage. And we're going to fashion a septal extension graft out of this to use in our endonasal approach. So we actually have two candidates here. We have this one piece of cartilage here which we can utilize for a smaller septic extension graft. And we have a 
larger one that we can also utilize. So this would be one graft. Fairly flat. Just shave it down a little bit. That's a nice piece of cartilage. We can also use this cartilage here. We can also use this cartilage for endonasal spreader grafts. There's a nice, nice long piece of a septic extension graft in case we need it. piece there. Nice long and a nasal septic center graft. So we have two really nice candidates for reconstruction. Both measuring, one measuring 25 millimeters on length, the other measuring 20 millimeters on length both about eight millimeters wide. This is a posterior deviation segment. It's, it's a chondral, osseous chondral deviation. You can see the cartilage on one side, the bone on the back side, and this was really causing airway obstruction, a posterior deviation for her as well. So the patient did not want cosmetic rhinoplasty. She just wanted to breathe better. So we used to a functional rhinoplasty. You can see how she has a C-shaped deformity. This side is a more depressed, it's a depressed middle vault. This side is now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put a septal extension graft on the right side, which is the side of the middle vault depression. You can see here the anterior septal angle. And here's her caudal septum still leaning off to the left side. So, 15 blade. So we're going to place a septal extension graft here determine the height of this. So here's the maxillary crest, here's the septum, maxillary crest, mosquito. So let's determine the height of the septal extension graft. Should be that's pretty high, but that'll rotate the tip up a little bit lower. So we should be about there. So that should be the height of the septal extension graft. So go ahead and bring me the graft style. I'm just going to carve out a little bit of this anterior septal angle. We have a couple candidates we can use. This is probably too long of a graft. This is probably just about right. Those are two grafts. This is our spreader graft candidate. So I think this graft is probably going to be just fine for her. So we'll take a brown. And I'll take some atoms. The other thing we can do is we can trim this graft. So a straighter segment, so we can see which is going to be our best candidate. This is a little bit thicker graft. 15 blade. I like this graft a little bit better because it's a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger. So turn that off. Browns. Atsons. A little bit stronger, more robust. Very good one. This graph now can be placed on this side and give it the resiliency that we're looking for. You can see how high it goes all the way to the anterior septal angle. Okay. And hold the atom here.
si Boy. Double skin hook and Joseph scissors. Now we're going to do is we're going to do a retrograde dissection of the membranous septum and the intercoral area. So hold this right here. size pocket. extension graft, native septum, and anterior septal angle can completely fall into this pocket. And now it's on the midline, it no longer sticks out. It corrects our external valve narrowing, also provides residual support to the internal valve. In here, now when we look here, we no longer see that septum sticking out. It's completely open on both sides. We've got a nice open area. So now you can see there's no caudal deviation anymore. It's nicely tucked in. Gives a nice open area. 